So let's talk about the file put contents function in PHP. As I've talked about, PHP is essentially the secretary for the internet. It takes data from one location and stores it into another. So it may take data from a form, it may take data from a database, it may take data from a file, it may take data from any number of locations, and then it has to put that data somewhere. So we've been printing data to the screen, is what we've been doing so far, essentially with that print function, print out to the screen, and then we see the data. But the question is, is what if we want to make that data more permanent, especially if we don't want to have to build our own SQL database. So a lot of times people use MySQL in order to uh, store data, which is a great way to do it, but then you actually have to spin up a MySQL database and go through all the configurations. What if you want something a little bit simpler, maybe not the best security, so it's not the best best way from a security standpoint to store data, but just an easy way where you can dump data someplace so that you can do something with it later. Well, by writing to a file, you can do that. So essentially what you can do is you can take your PHP variables, you can write them to a new file, or you can append an old file, and therefore that information will be stored until you get around to deleting it. So that's where the file put contents function comes in, is you're able to take the variables and put them in into a file. So with that, let's go over to the computer so I can give you a demonstration on how this works, because this is where we start to get into the, the nifty neat stuff, I think, with PHP and actually start to be able to do things that are really functional in the real world. So this is a little script that I created to show you how to write to a file using file put contents. So we call this file put contents .php, and of course we open it up with the PHP tag. Now under that we're going to have a number of different variables here. And so the first variable that we're going to have is the file variable. So this is going to be the name of the file that we're going to be writing to. So it's important to understand that if this file does not currently exist, as long as your permissions aren't screwed up, the script will be able to create the file. So it's important to understand the file does not have to exist before the script runs. This will check to see if the file exists. If it doesn't exist, it will create the file. And so with here, with that particular variable, we're just going to call it dollar sign file to make it easier, equals single quotation marks, and then whatever the name of the file is. So if you want this to be txt, htm, html, php, again, you can, you can have PHP write other script files that will run using something else. Basically, this is just writing to some kind of ASCII file. You give it whatever, whatever uh, ending you want. So what we're doing here is single quotation mark. We're going to call this file.html. I'm calling it .html so I can bring this up in a web browser and actually look at what the output is. Uh, then we're closing the single quotation marks. And then, of course, we're ending the line with the semicolon. The next thing that we're going to do is with this particular script, it's kind of kind of be like a simulation of a log file. And so what it's going to do is it goes, it's going to print out some like iteration and then it's going to give a timestamp. So it's going to print something out and then it's going to give a timestamp. Now in order to do that timestamp, I need to create a variable for the timestamp. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do dollar sign time. So anytime this is called to be printed out, we want it to be what the current time is. And we're going to have it equal, and we're going to have it the time function. So this is going to go, it's going to look at what the current computer time is, and then it's going to set the value of time to be whatever it currently is. And then we close this with a semicolon. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create the variable information. So this is the variable that is going to get printed into file. So you have file, and then you have the variable getting printed into file. So we could just call this dollar sign info, and this is going to equal double quotation marks. And so what we're going to say is iteration. So we're just going to print out iteration, space, and then whatever the time is. And then since we're going to be looking at at this with a web browser, then we're going to do a break. So we're just going to say iteration, space, and whatever the time is, break, next line, next line, next line, next line. Because what we're going to do with this particular file is we're going to append, so that's going to add on to the end of the file. Again, think of it like a log file. Whenever something happens, you have whatever the comment is, whatever the thing that happened, and then you have a timestamp. So, and then the break. So then we do double quotation marks to end that, and then, of course, we do the semicolon. And now this is where we get to the function. So this is where we are going to write the dot .info variable into file. So we do file underscore put underscore contents. 
Then we open the parentheses. The first thing that we do is we feed it the file name. What is the file that we are printing to? So we are going to give it dollar sign file. Then we're going to do comma. And then the next thing that we're going to do is say, what are we going to be writing into that file? And so we are just going to feed uh, it dollar sign info. So what we're going to feed into the file is this particular line and then we're going to do comma and so for this particular project that we're doing we're going to do file append so if you don't add append here it will overwrite so again this is an important thing especially with troubleshooting I would argue in the beginning you always do append so therefore you always know whether or not it's actually running because if you overwrite and you screw up the overwrite you may get some weird errors so by appending what will happen is this will continuously keep adding to that file and so you can see the pre previous iterations that have happened and you can see what you're currently doing. So I would argue at this point you just do file append and then you close the parentheses and then you do the semicolon. Well, the important thing to understand about this particular script is that this script is going to run on one page. So file put contents.php is going to be one page that we're going to open up with the web browser and then it's going to output the information to file.html. But again, from a troubleshooting perspective, one of the questions that you have to ask yourself is how do you know whether or not the script actually ran? So if all we do, if we stop at this line, we don't add this additional line, we just stop here, what will happen is the script will run and all we will be left with is a blank screen. It will just simply be a white screen because nothing is being printed out onto the file put contents.php screen. It's all getting printed out to that file.html file. So what I'm going to do here just as a troubleshooting thing to show that the script actually ran. So it ran. <laughs> If something isn't printed to file.html, maybe there are other issues with it, but I want to make sure that the script actually ran. What I'm going to do, and this is going to show up on the file put contents.php page, is I'm going to do print, then double quotation marks, and what I'm going to do, say is script ran at colon, and then whatever the value of time is. So this, this will get printed on the file put contents.php page so that I can see that the script ran and then I can go to the file.html page and if something isn't working there at least I know that the script ran if you understand what I'm saying. So this is an important concept especially when you're new is building in these little troubleshooting routines so that you verify okay the variable is what I think the variable is yes this particular script ran and then what what you do in the real world is you can add these things in verify everything works and then you can go through and start deleting or commenting out uh, these particular lines of script when you know everything works how it's supposed to but that's all we're going to do here is just to say that the script actually ran so this has all been uploaded and so what we can do is we can come here we can go to silicon uh, dojo.com and then we're going to do file uh, put contents actually before that what we can do is we can go to silicondojo.com and we can do file.html and what you'll notice here is file.html does not currently exist within the web server and so what it's doing is it's defaulting me back to what the default home page is right now so file.html does not actually exist what will happen as soon as we press enter here now what we can see is script ran at and this is the computer time so I can see okay the script ran at this time so I know the script itself fi uh, fired what whether whatever happens with file.html but then we can come over here and I can do refresh okay and now I can see so the iteration and we can see the time so when I did this the script ran at this time and at that time it printed out the information here so now I know it works again what I can do is, is since we're appending with this particular script I can just simply refresh so I can refresh and see how see how that number ticks up it keeps ticking up well then I come over here and then I refresh and now we see we have all of these different iterations so imagine every time I'm refreshing this is an event happening within your server and so that's triggering that file put contents uh, function to add to the file.html 
and then we can come here and we can look at that log file. So this is where you, you might you might print you know who logged in at what time, who logged in with what IP address at what time, you know any kind of different things. The idea here is that this this is how you can create a basic log file or anything else, and again be able to write to a file. So this is all it is. Again, what you do, the first thing that you do is you create the variable for the file and you give it whatever file that you're going to be writing to, single quotation marks. Uh, this is just an additional variable for me. I'm just creating that variable for time so that I that I have something to troubleshoot with. Then past that, what we're going to do is we're going to create the info variable. So this is what's going to get printed into the file itself. Here's where we create it. Again, adding that time variable. And then all you do is file put contents, parentheses, the file, the variable for the file, the variable for the information. And then again, I would argue uh, for you guys to do the file underscore append just because it'll make your life easier while you're troubleshooting at least in the beginning and then go from there this again has to be all in uppercase just make sure you do this all in uppercase close parentheses and semicolon then just to make sure your script is actually running I would argue you should have something run on the page itself but that's your your decision for me I just did this script ran at time so you know what happens so this is how you use the file put contents to write to a file and uh, it's a pretty simple script all in all so that's really all there is the file underscore put contents function in PHP this is an easy way for you to be able to write to a file and again this gives you a way to store data that's coming in from locations. Again, if you have a form, so if you're having people fill out a form, this is an easy way to dump the information from that form into a file uh, with, again, and it gives you a way to access that information without having to have a MySQL database and whether not having to do SQL statements the whole nine yards. Now here's one of the warnings. Warning, 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 Will Robinson. <laughs> One of the reasons, again, coders hate PHP is because it's so easy to write in PHP that a lot of new coders do idiotic things when it comes to security. Now, do remember with this, you are writing to a file. You're most likely writing to a text file. And most likely, if you're, you're watching this particular series, you probably don't know how file permissions work on your server why this matters is if you're going to be writing to files I would argue you shouldn't ask for things such as people's email addresses or anything that may come close to being private because remember this is a text file so this is very easy to read if you put information into a database you have to use SQL statements in order to pull that information out you have to have usernames you have to have passwords it's not that SQL can't be hacked but there's a couple of steps that you have to go through if you have a .txt file, basically anybody with a computer can read it. If you screw up on the permissions and it's readable by the public, um, if, if you have, again, if your company, if you have people put in their first name, last name, email address, and phone number, you dump that into a text file that's readable from the outside world, that's when nasty security problems happen and happen and people start getting spear fished and the rest of it so with this particular thing it's not it's not that you can't use files as a secure way to store data it's just probably not the best way to do it and unless you really understand what you're doing i would say that that's not what you should do so this is good for things um Again, let's say you had a sign-up list. So you have a sign-up list for an event, and you just want people to, to sign in. So basically, people can go. They can put their name. It dumps their name, and that's it. That's pretty secure. Uh, if you want to know something like T-shirt size, so let's say you have a company or organization, and you want to get people T-shirts for that company. Again, their name, their T-shirt size. That's, that's a good way. <laughs> to store information again log files do be careful with the log files if you start dumping in too many ip addresses too much information that that might be confidential then again you could have problems if a hacker is able to view those log files and then realize oh this is your active directory server and this is your exchange server and this is your other server and this is who logs in so on and so forth so do be careful with the log files too but that's really all there is uh, to writing to a file again this is a very simple concept where it gets complicated and is in the real world where you have to decide what's appropriate to write to a file what's not appropriate 
appropriate to write to a file and then again once you wrote write to a file how are you going to interact with that data again this comes back to the idea of how do you want to print data to a file do you want to print data that's viewable by a web browser or print data that's viewable by a text editor so if you're using if you're going to be viewing uh, the file in HTML, then you would use break in, in HTML in order to break to a new line. If you are going to be viewing this information, let's say using a text editor or just word processor or something, you want to do that slash in for a new line. So this is the type of thing that you have to think about when you start using this. But overall, it's just one of those things that just takes a little bit of experience. So with that, that's the file underscore put underscore contents function in PHP. And that's why it matters.